today I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to make a Basque style cheesecake. So stick around. Welcome back to No Recipes. I'm Mark Matsumoto and I'm here to show you how to elevate your everyday meals. So I hope this video earns your subscription and perhaps your support on Patreon. If you've been following along for long, you know that I'm all about a good taste to effort ratio, which is why I don't do a ton of baking. That's because there's usually a direct correlation between the amount of time you spend and how delicious a cake turns out. Besides, baking just involves a few too many rules for my taste. This cheesecake breaks all the rules. There's no crust to make or fancy mixing techniques, and the goal is to burn it. It may sound crazy, but it makes for an amazing dessert that's like a love child between a Spanish flan and a New York style cheesecake. It was invented in 1990 in San Sebastian by a chef named Santiago Rivera for his restaurant La Viña. By cooking it in a super hot oven, you're able to create this kind of crust on the outside while the inside remains custardy and satiny smooth. The best part though, you've probably already got the ingredients that you need in your fridge. So you can go make this as soon as you finish watching this. Before I jump into this week's recipe, I want to send a special thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Since my last update, we've gained four new patrons these awesome supporters are contributing a few bucks each month to help fund the development of these recipes and videos. If you're learning something new from my recipes, I hope you'll consider clicking the link down in the description below to join the No Recipes crew and help fund our future videos. Our ingredients are just two eggs, 226 grams of cream cheese, one cup of heavy whipping cream, 100 grams of sugar, 15 grams of cake flour, and a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. For the cream cheese, I know someone's gonna ask, so I'm using Philadelphia today, but a European style cream cheese like Kiri or San Milan will work even better. To make the batter, I'm gonna add the cream cheese, eggs, cream, sugar, flour, and vanilla extract to the blender. And then I'm gonna turn it on. Now we just need to blend this until the mixture is free of lumps. That's it! I told you this is gonna be simple. If you don't have a blender, a mixer or a food processor will work too. Okay, this is looking pretty smooth, so I'm gonna turn this off and let the batter settle for about 20 minutes, which is gonna give the air bubbles a chance to work their way to the surface. While we wait for the batter to rest, let's start preheating the oven. I'm gonna set my convection oven to 230 degrees Celsius, which is about 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, we need to line our six inch baking pan with parchment paper. This gives the cheesecake its trademark ruffled edges and it makes cleanup a snap. I like using a pan with a removable bottom because it makes it a lot easier to mold the paper to fit the pan. Just center the parchment paper and press the bottom into the pan like this. Now all we have to do is go around the edges and crease the fold so the paper conforms to the shape of the pan. Then you can pull the paper out Place the bottom back into the pan and the paper should nestle nicely back into place. Okay, our oven's warmed up and our batter is settled, so let's go ahead and pour it into the pan. Ah, oh, I could just pour this batter straight into my mouth. Most of the big bubbles should have settled out of the batter by now, but you can drop the pan a few times on a kitchen towel to coax out any remaining air. Now I'm going to put this into our preheated oven and let it bake for about 20 to 25 minutes. In my convection oven, it takes exactly 22 minutes, but you may need to experiment a bit to find the right combination of time and temperature for your oven. Remember, the goal here is to get a dark brown top that's just shy of black while still having a good amount of jiggle in the center. 
The color on this is looking perfect, so let's get it out of the oven and give it a shake. This is what you want to see. If you were to slice this right now, it would run all over the place. But by chilling it in the fridge, the center is going to firm up, giving you the satiny smooth texture of custard in the middle. If your cake isn't jiggling like this, or it's not getting enough color on top, bake it at a higher temperature for less time next time. Okay, I'm gonna let this fully cool on a cooling rack. Once it's down to room temperature, put the whole thing in a large zipper bag and seal it up. Now I'm gonna put this in the fridge to chill for at least five hours, but I usually let it go overnight. Once it's chilled, it should end up looking something like this. Let's go ahead and get it out of the pan. To slice it, I'm gonna prepare a pot of boiling water and a sharp knife. You wanna heat the knife up with the boiling water, which ensures you're able to make a nice clean cut through the cheesecake. Then just separate the cake from the parchment paper and cut a slice. Be sure to rinse the knife off with the hot water after each slice. The hot knife should go through the cake like butter. And now for the moment of truth. Wow, it's literally perfect. After having this, I seriously don't think I can ever go back to a normal cheesecake again. The sides take on a fluffy texture, kind of like a normal cheesecake, while the center has the texture of a barely set custard that melts into a creamy pool of deliciousness the moment it hits your tongue. The top isn't crusty in the traditional sense, but it has all those nutty, caramely flavors of a good crust with just a hint of balancing bitterness that keeps the cake from getting too sweet or cloying. As you saw, there's almost no effort that goes into making this cake, but the key is in the timing and temperature of the oven, so keep experimenting until you nail the perfect combo for your setup. It took me three tries in my oven, but even the mistakes were gobbled up without a second thought. Honestly, this cheesecake has become one of my favorite desserts, and it's not just because it's easy to make. Basque style cheesecake is simple enough to make when you're alone, but it's also impressive enough to make for guests, so I hope you'll give it a try. If you enjoyed this video, let me know you want to see more like it by giving this a big thumbs up and by sharing a link to it to all your friends that love a good cheesecake. Well, I'm gonna go slice myself a big old slab of cheesecake, but be sure to hit subscribe and ring that bell, and I'll catch you in the next one. Check us out on Instagram at No Recipes.